I'm going to run through some problems on the uh, Math 1314 final exam review. First problem is to solve 4 times the quantity x minus 3 minus 3x greater than or equal to negative 7. So I'm going to distribute the 4 and get 4x minus 12 minus 3x greater than or equal to negative 7. If I combine like terms, 4x minus 3x is x, so I get x minus 12 greater than or equal to negative 7. If I add 12 to both sides, I get x greater than or equal to 5. So on the number line, equal to means include 5. Greater than 5 means shades to the right. So my answer in interval notation would be 5 to infinity. Number 2 says to solve negative 2 less than negative 2y plus 7 less than 12. I need to isolate y and get it by itself in the middle. First thing I need to do is subtract 7 from all three sides. I get negative 9 less than negative 2y less than 5. Then I divide everything by negative 2. I've divided by a negative number, so the inequalities need to flip. I get 9 halves greater than y greater than negative 5 halves. I think it's easier to read if you flip negative 5 halves less than y less than 9 halves. So on the number line, I do not want to include negative 5 halves. I do not want to include 9 halves, but I want everything in the middle. In interval notation, you write that as parenthesis, negative 5 halves, comma, 9 halves, parenthesis. Number 3, solve absolute value of x plus 15 less than 17. The absolute value is isolated. So now to get rid of it, I need to write negative 17 less than x plus 15 less than 17. Subtract 15 from all three sides. And I get negative 32 less than x less than 2. Open circles and everything in the middle. So my answer in interval notation is parenthesis, negative 32 comma 2, parenthesis. Number 4, solve absolute value of 2x plus 7 plus 8 greater than 7. I need to isolate the absolute value first, so I need to subtract 8 from both sides. I get absolute value of 2x plus 7 is greater than negative 1. I don't have to go any farther because I notice that greater than negative 1 Anytime you take the absolute value of anything, it's always going to be greater than or equal to zero. So when is it greater than negative one? For all real values. Number five, does that graph represent a function? Yes, it does, because it passes the vertical line test. Any vertical line that I draw will intersect the graph at most one time. So number five, that graph does represent a function. For number six, I'm given f of x equals 7x plus 8. I need to find the x-intercept, so I let y equal 0. If 0 equals 7x plus 8, subtracting 8 from both sides, I get negative 8 equals 7x. Dividing both sides by 7, I get negative 8 over 7 is equal to x. The coordinate for my x-intercept is negative 8 sevenths comma 0. To find the y-intercept, I let x equal 0. So I have y equals 7 times 0 plus 8. 7 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 8 is 8. The coordinate of my y-intercept is 0 comma 8. For number 7, Given f of x equals 5 divided by the square root of 6 minus x, I want to find the domain. First thing I notice is that I have a denominator. 
that denominator cannot equal zero. I also notice that I have a square root, and I know that whatever's under the square root has to be greater than or equal to zero. So in this problem, I know that six minus x has to be bigger than zero. Again, whatever's under the radical, six minus x has to be greater than or equal to zero, but in this problem, it can't be equal to zero because it's in the denominator. So solving the inequality, six minus x greater than zero, subtract six from both sides. I get negative x greater than negative six. Dividing both sides by negative one, I get x less than six. So I want an open circle on six and I want a shade to the left. My domain will be negative infinity to 6 with a parenthesis. And remember that positive and negative infinity always have parentheses next to them. Number 8, I want to find the equation of a line through the two points 1, 3 and negative 2, negative 4. I'm going to call this my x1 and this my y1. And I'm going to call number 1 my x2 and 3 is going to be my y2. Why do I want to label my points that way? Because my slope formula says that the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I get y2, which is here, 3 minus y1, negative 4, over x2, which is 1, minus x1, which is negative 2. Again, to show you what goes where, y2 was here. y1 was here. x2 went here and x1 went here. Okay, when I do the arithmetic, 3 plus 4 is 7, 1 plus 2 is 3. My slope is 7 thirds. Now I come over to my point slope formula for the equation of a line and I get y minus, now y1 again here is negative 4. So y minus negative 4 equals my slope times x minus x1, which is negative 2. So the equation would be y plus 4 equals 7 thirds times x plus 2. If I were doing a uh, question that said to just find the equation of a line, this is good. That's the point slope form for the equation of a line through those two points. But if it's a multiple choice problem and you have to find uh, the equation of the line in slope intercept form, I need to manipulate this to e look like y equals mx plus b. So first thing I'm going to do is distribute the slope and get y plus 4 equals 7 thirds x plus 14 thirds. Then I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And slope intercept form would give me y equals 7 thirds x. 14 thirds minus 4 is plus 2 thirds. Okay, number nine, I want the equation of a line through the point negative three, negative three, that's perpendicular to the line five x plus four y equals 10. So I'm gonna start here with five x plus four y equals 10. I need to find the slope of that line. I'm gonna put it in y equals mx plus b form. So subtracting five x from both sides, I get four y equals negative five x plus 10. If I divide everything by four, I get y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 10 fourths, which is the same as 5 halves. The slope of this line is negative 5 fourths. 
the slope of the line I want is perpendicular to this line, so this slope would be positive 4 fifths because perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. And then I also want to remind you, you want to go through the point negative 3, negative 3. Using point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We get y minus negative 3 equals 4 fifths times x minus negative 3. If this were a free response test, that would be a good enough answer. You just needed to find an equation of a line. But if you need to put it in a certain form, and on this test, or this uh, review, it's multiple choice, and they wanted it in standard form. So I need to distribute the 4 fifths, and I get y plus 3 equals 4 fifths x plus 12 fifths. Now multiply both sides by 5. When I do that, I get 5y plus 15 equals 4x plus 12. Moving the 5y to the right side, I need to subtract it. So I get 4x minus 5y. And then I want to move this 12 to the other side, so subtracting 12 from both sides, 15 minus 12 is 3. Okay, for number 10, they give you this graph over here, and they tell you to draw the graph of y equals 2 times f of x plus 1 plus 4. So you've done three transformations here. Inside with the x plus 1, that has moved it left 1. So on the original points here on this graph, you need to subtract 1 from all the x values. You've also done a vertical stretch of 2. So you need to multiply all these points, the y values, by 2. You've also need to move everything up 4 values. So all these y values you need to add 4. Okay, from this graph, this graph here, I went and labeled my four points that I saw. One, two, three, four points. Negative four, negative two, negative two, one, zero, negative two, and two, one. Okay, those are the four points I want to do something with. And what again did I want to do? My x values, I wanted to subtract one. So subtract one. I'm going to do my original x value and subtract one. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 1. Sorry, negative 3. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. For my y values, I wanted to stretch it by a, multi um, stretch it by a factor of 2. So I need to multiply 2 times y. Then I want to move it up 4. So add 4. So this original y value of negative 2, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 4 is 0. So I have the point negative 5, 0. For this y value of 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6. So I have the point negative 3, 6. For this y value of negative 2, again I have 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 4 is 0. So I have the point negative 1, 0. And last, this y value of 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6. I now have the point 1, 6. My new graph looks like this. Here's my old graph. Here's my new graph. 
Number 11, I'm given a piecewise defined function here, and I'm asked to find f of 4. I have to dis decide where it is 4. Does it fall in the blue piece, the red piece, or the green piece? Well, when x is 4, I'm here. So I'm going to use the red definition of the function right here and say that this is equal to the absolute value of 4 plus 1. Absolute value of 5 is just 5. Number 12, given that f of x equals negative 8x and g of x equals negative 3x squared plus 6, find g minus f of x. By definition, that's g of x minus f of x. g of x is negative 3x squared plus 6. You want to subtract f of x, which is negative 8x. So you get negative 3x squared plus 6 plus 8x. Negative 3x squared plus 8x plus 6. For number 13, given f of x equals 3 times x minus 2 quantity squared plus 6, find the vertex of that quadratic function. The vertex is 2 comma negative 6. You get that from here. If you'll remember, vertex form for a parabola is a times x minus h quantity squared plus k, where hk is the vertex. This parabola opens up because the a is positive. If it opens up, you're going to have a minimum value, and that minimum value is the y value of the vertex, so on this problem it would be negative 6. Number 14, given the quadratic function y equals negative x squared minus 4x plus 5, find the vertex. Here, a is negative 1, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to 5. To find the vertex, we're going to use the formula h equals negative b over 2a. So negative b would be 4 over 2 times a, which is negative 1. 4 over negative 2 is equal to negative 2. That's our x-coordinate of our vertex. To find the y-coordinate, you plug negative 2 back in to your original equation. So you get negative, negative 2 squared, minus 4 times negative 2, plus 5. And that value is negative 4 plus 8 plus 5, which is 9. So your vertex is at negative 2 comma 9. Negative 2, 9. The axis of, axis of symmetry goes down here. And the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. The y-intercept, we're going to plug 0 in for x up here. Plugging 0 in for x, I get 0 minus 0 plus 5. So my y-intercept is 0, 5. One, 